Hybrid technology has often been decreed too pricey for the super mini segment, but Renault has attempted to democratise it with this car, the Clio E-Tech Hybrid. It's a little pricier than an ordinary Clio, but the French brand hopes you'll be impressed by the key WLTP figures here. 64.2 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 98 grams per kilometre of CO2. Plus, there's an EV option that gives limited all-electric driving range. Unlike the plug-in E-Tech engine that Renault uses in its capture and in the Megane, this Clio E-Tech hybrid doesn't use a plug-in power plant. Renault reckons that that would make this little Super Mini too pricey. Instead, it's a self-charging full hybrid unit like that in, say, a Toyota Yaris or a Honda Jazz. So it can, for very short periods, run independently on full electric power, unlike the mild hybrid engines that you'll now find in quite a few of this car's small hatch rivals. Renault makes much of the way that the design of this car's engine borrows from its F1 racing technology. Like the brand's racing power plant, this one is extremely compact and it features two electric motors, one with 36 kilowatts on the rear of the gearbox and one with 15 kilowatts on top of the transmission, along with a four-cylinder, 1.6-litre, normally aspirated petrol engine. Uh, now that contributes most to the 140 horsepower total output. The gearbox is an auto, of course, but of the more unusual dog box clutchless variety. And the motor is powered by a 1.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack located under the boot floor. The rest of the drivetrain has somehow been shoehorned in beneath the bonnet. There's plenty of mid range pulling power, so plenty of scope for enthusiastic progress here, particularly if you select the most dynamic of the three drive modes, sport but you're not going to want to do that too often for fear of decimating the frugal fuel returns uh, which would have prompted you to buy this car in the first place. Uh, think up to 64.2 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 98 grams per kilometre of CO2. For those kinds of readings you'll want to stay in my sense. that's a hybrid setting which blends the petrol and electric motor output for maximum economy or possibly in the eco setting which uses a more measured mapping of the accelerator pedal and adapted gear changing for greater economy. In town you might want to select EV, uh, now that prioritises battery electric drive up to about 38 miles an hour, uh, that's providing there's sufficient charge. Renault claims that a Clio hybrid will be able to travel for 80% of urban journeys on battery power alone. There is also a further brake setting on the gear lever which increases throttle liftoff electrical regeneration. Apart from the badge work, there are no visual differences to mark the Clio E-Tech Hybrid out from standard variants in the range, which means the look is just as with any other Mark V Clio, a slightly more expressively styled design than others in this model line. Here at the front, sculpted ribs on the bonnet flow down into this wide central grille and LED tusks curve out from the full LED headlamps in a C-shaped stylistic flourish that one writer reckoned reminded him of a fairground version of Salvador Dali's moustaches. The curvy creativity continues at the rear too where these tail lights feature a C-shaped 3D illuminating signature but of course what's more important is the stuff you can't see uh, this Mark V model's stiff and sophisticated CMFB common module family B segment chassis structure fashioned from high elastic limit steel and designed from the outset to accommodate this electrified drivetrain. When we first sampled this Mark V Clio's considerably upgraded cabin, we pronounced it to be unbettered in the segment for style and quality feel, and our opinion hasn't changed. For this hybrid model, it gains E-Tech badging and subtle detailing, running the width of the interior in the air vents and around the gear lever. Uh, otherwise, the ambiance is much as you'd find it in any other well-specified Clio, with soft-touch trimming, tactile touch points, smart piano key switches and supportive enveloping seats. The need to incorporate various extra e-functions into the EasyLink portrait format centre dash screen means it must be at least 7 inches in size with a clear hybrid and ideally you get yourself a trim level that features this larger 9.3 inch monitor the one we have in this test car. Uh, this adds the finishing touch to what Renault's tried to do here. It feels satisfyingly sophisticated as you poke and pinch and swipe your way through all sorts of menus for things like navigation, uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. 
apps, multimedia options and a decent quality DAB audio system. The instrument binnacle can also be quite colourful because you have to have virtual dials with a Clio hybrid. That's so the various extra e-drive readouts can be incorporated. These sit within this 7-inch colour screen. If you'd like this TFT display to cover the full width of the binnacle as it would do in a larger and more expensive modern design, then an even larger 10-inch instrument binnacle screen, uh, that's the largest in the segment, can be fitted at the very top of the range on request. Let's pull back this disguised C-pillar door handle and take a seat in the back. Now we weren't especially impressed by the space provided back here when we first tested the conventional version of this model and we're still not, although at least the hybrid system has been packaged in a way that doesn't detract further from the knee and leg and headspace available. But does that matter given that for the majority of buyers these rear seats will be used only occasionally for adults and more regularly for children? Well, only you can decide that. We'll finish with a look at cargo space. Uh, the standard Clio atones for its somewhat restricted rear seat surroundings by somehow managing to serve up the largest boot in the Super Mini segment. Well, you don't get that here. Uh, the usual 391 litre capacity falls to 301 litres in this case, thanks to battery pack positioning beneath the cargo area floor. Still, that is only three litres less than you get in a Honda Jazz, and it's 15 litres more than you get in a Toyota Yaris. One day we'll come across the Super Mini fitted out with a properly flexible 40-20-40 split backrest, but that day hasn't yet come, so this Clio gets the usual 60-40 split affair, which, when it's pushed forward, frees up 1,054 litres of capacity across an almost flat load floor. And in summary, well, you could either see this as a small car with needlessly expensive technology, or wonder who wouldn't want a small, economical hatch that borrows its transmission and motor technology from the most up-to-the-minute thinking in F1. One writer describes this Clio hybrid as the Pepsi Max option in the Clio range, in some ways a compromised solution, but one that still leaves a decent taste in the mouth and is better for us in the long run. There is something in that, and there's a lot to like about what Renault's served up here.